Hey everybody, welcome back to Living in Lexington. On today's episode, we are actually going to be changing it up a little bit. I know that I usually talk about the real estate market or things to do here in the area, uh, but I get a lot of questions about moving. And um, as you know, someone who literally just went through moving, um, I realize that not everyone does this all the time. So in this video, we're gonna talk about tips on moving and how to make that process go a little bit easier and a little less of a headache. And so here we go, guys. Hey everybody, before we continue with this video, make sure you hit the like button. It helps get our content out there, lets people know that they need to see this video, and also it helps them uh, understand you know, the moving process. If they're researching on moving tips, uh, this video is gonna help everybody out. It's just gonna be a good refresher uh, to kind of get everybody into the mindset of the move. Thank you. Okay, everybody, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about moving and tips on moving. One thing I wanna stress is there's a couple of different phases of a move. So you got three phases. Phase one is a few weeks before prepping for the move, day before, day of. Okay, so right now, let's talk about a few weeks before. You want to prep for the move. You don't wanna just wait till the last minute. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a headache, it's gonna be stressful, but if you do certain things, it's gonna make this process a little easier. So tip number one, on a few weeks before, schedule a moving group schedule a moving company, hire some movers, pay some hands to come help you move your stuff. If you've got a lot of stuff, like if you're moving from one house to another, you you really need to try to separate the funds, set aside some funds in, in getting a moving company. I'm telling you, it's gonna save your life. It's gonna make your day a little bit less stressful. We always just moved ourselves. This was the first time we actually got a moving company and it was 100% worth the money, without a doubt. So make sure a few weeks before, if you're thinking about it, try to set aside some funds and schedule a moving company. You need to do this a few weeks before, if not a month out, because you don't know what their schedule's like. They could be super busy, especially if they're a popular group. So tip number two, when it comes to a few weeks before the move, think about hiring a cleaning service. I know everyone's schedules are very, very different. If you're moving across the country and you have to literally leave with the movers, you're not going to have a lot of time to clean the property, especially if you're moving from a house, trying to sell that house, you need it to leave it clean and spotless. Um, I'll tell you, I work with a lot of buyers. The number one thing that's off-putting whenever we go look at a home is mess. If it's disgusting, if it's dirty, if it looks like they haven't been taking care of it, the buyers want to walk right out immediately because if you left it in an unclean state, odds are you probably are hiding some other major issues that might be under the surface of the house. So make sure if a few weeks before, on top of trying to hire a moving company, try to set aside a few more funds to have a professional cleaning service come in, clean up the home, and it'll just be one less thing off your plate. So. Tip number three, when it comes to planning ahead a few weeks before, you want to think about utilities. You want to go ahead and transfer utilities, transfer your internet, your cable service, whatever services that you have, you want to go ahead and plan for that. Um, one thing that caught me off guard was I got here expecting internet to just transfer very, very quickly, transfer very easily, and there was no line coming into the house. So I had to get a tech to come out here and put in a new line. And so we were able to do some hot spots for a few days. Luckily, we were able to get them relatively quickly. But just like a moving company, you don't know what their schedule's like. You don't know how quickly whatever service you need is going to be able to make that adjustment for you. So plan a few weeks ahead. Make sure where you're moving is good to go service-wise. You can transfer it. You might have to switch services. Some Sometimes Spectrum has one area. ATC has another. So you need to understand what your planning for ahead. So again, again, a few weeks before makes that switch. You can take your stuff, plug it right in and you don't even miss a beat. So tip number four, a few weeks before, this is something I think is very unique. And a lot of people may not necessarily think of it. My wife thought of it for our move and it did make it a lot easier. Have a yard sale, try to shed some stuff that you don't need or have never even touched. Um, I've got some old 
lacrosse equipment that I need to get rid of that I have not touched and I'm never going to touch it. It's just one of those things I got to purge. So same thing with you when you're planning a few weeks ahead. Think about stuff you do not need. Okay, maybe it's a piece of furniture. You want to upgrade your furniture going into the next home. Fantastic. Go ahead and get rid of this one, though. So go ahead and make it a little bit easier for you. Uh, and it's one less thing that you have to move. It's one less thing that needs to get into the truck. Depending on how big your truck is that you get, a U-Haul or with a moving company, you're going to have to shed some stuff. So try to purge items that you don't touch anymore, clothes you don't wear. It's one less thing that you have to worry about. Tip number five, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to planning ahead a few weeks before, start acquiring moving boxes and start, you know, begin that process. That kind of leads me into step tip number six, which is begin the back packing process weeks in advance. So tip number five, get tape, get boxes, start labeling those boxes. And then tip number six, start packing a few weeks before. Pack the stuff that you don't touch. You know you're not going to touch. If you're in the middle of winter, you're not going to be grilling. So pack up all your grilling items or pack up all your outdoor Z things. Um, pack up your winter stuff. Pack Just start packing up clothes and items that you don't use every single day, don't plan to use every single day. Um, and as you get closer and closer, just each day pack something new. That's kind of what we did. We would just pack every weekend, pick a room or pick, pick a group of items make sure they got packed. So by the time the week leading into the move, we were 95% packed. We were pretty much done. So it, it's a less stress on you as you get closer to that moving day if you start packing ahead of time. So now we're in the second phase. It's the day before you move. This is a real important day. This is a day to kind of just get yourself ready for the next day because the moving day is a very, very long day. I understand not everyone moves all the time. Uh, the average American buys eight homes in their life, so they move technically eight times as an adult, um, like once every seven or eight years, something like that. So just you don't do it a lot. So it's these tiny little things people don't necessarily think of. So tip number one, label all the boxes if you have it. What should you label them? Label them the room that they're going to be in or label them where they need to go into the next home. And that's very important because that actually helps your movers see what's on the box and transfer it to where it's going to be. Um, if something's fragile, get fragile stickers, write, write fragile on the top, on the sides. So it's, you know, it's not missed. You want to make sure those fragile items are noticeable and those boxes are noticeable. Um, if you are like me, you'll grab two boxes at once. If fragile is written on the top and it's underneath another box, you're never going to see it and you're never going to know. So make sure you take those precautions when in regards to labeling. So another tip when it comes to the day before you move, tip number two, stock up on power bars and water bottles. You, you're going to need to because if you're like me, you're going to forget to eat. Uh, the, the moving day, eating is, you just forget about it. It's, it's a whole other activity that you don't even want to consider at that point. Most likely you're going to eat out anyways, but having water and granola bars will make that day a little bit easier for you, especially because you're going to burn a lot of energy that you're not necessarily ready to. Um, I know our lips got super chapped. We were hungry. I mean, I, I luckily we had water bottles for our movers. We had water bottles for ourselves. I snuck a couple and, and just downed them. Like I didn't realize how thirsty I was going to be. So make sure you stock up on all those items because you're, you're going to be moving all day. You're going to be literally doing stuff all day long. And you're going to want to make sure that you have enough energy to finish the day. Tip number three, ladies and gentlemen, something that uh, most people don't necessarily think about, especially because, again, you move, you rarely move. You don't necessarily think about this stuff. Have cash, get cash, go to a bank, get cash handy uh, so you can tip your movers. And um, cash is preferred just because it's, it's you know, easy, straightforward. Uh, a lot of people don't necessarily think about that. They, it is common practice. It is common courtesy to tip your movers. And if you think about it, think about all the stuff that they're going to move. They're going to move everything. They're moving your furniture. They're moving all your boxes. And then they're taking it to uh, the next location. So um, always have money ready. Uh, rule of thumb, 5 to 10% of what you're spending on to move. So if you do $1,000, 
uh, tip anywhere between 50 and 100 bucks, and then just divide that evenly among your movers. And that's just a good common practice, good courtesy as well. And I know they'll definitely take care of your stuff <laughs> if, if they know that the, a tip's on its way. Tip number four, ladies and gentlemen, if you are like me, you own pets. We've got a dog, we got two dogs and a cat, big lab, big husky, and a cat. The cat was actually able to kind of hang around with us. She didn't necessarily get in the way, but our lab and our husky would have gotten in the way. Um, luckily, we had in-laws that we could, you know, pass them off to. So that's kind of the tip, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't picked up on it yet, find um, somewhere to take your dogs, your animals, and just kind of get them out of the way. The, the moving process is going to be a lot simpler that way especially when you're loading and unloading the truck, if you can just kind of escort them and get them out of the picture completely, it will move faster. So you want to definitely move fast. Most moving companies charge by the hour. So um, if you can just get the dogs out of the way, that's that's less hands that you have to worry about, that you've you got to take care of animals, make sure they're eating and pooping and all that other stuff. So if you're able to, I would just either relocate them early get a family friend or family member to watch them for you. Uh, just a tip, it just makes that process go faster. Day before you move, you're finishing packing, you're finishing all that stuff up, make sure you grab yourself an overnight bag. And the reason I say this is because um, you wanna have certain items readily available, such as toilet paper, um, maybe important documents, clothes. If you pack all your clothes and you only have one outfit, I mean, you're stuck with that outfit until you unpack everything. So make sure you pack an overnight bag with all your toiletries. Just think about going on vacation. What would you pack for a vacation? Um, you know, if you have work and you need your laptop readily available, you need a phone charger readily available, think about those stuff. Toiletries. Um, I would even pack a roll of toilet paper. Just throw that in there. And that way you have essential items at hand ready to go for you. It will, you know, save a panic once you get to your next location. Okay, now we're in the final phase. Phase three, day of the move. This is a very, very long day. Tip number one, simple, straightforward, get some sleep. <laughs> get enough sleep so you can wake up early that day of the move. I'm talking about a couple hours before. So if you're, if you're like me, our movers got there at 9 a.m. We were up by 6.37 at the latest. You just want to have that cushion. You'll be surprised at what will come up the day of the move that might be throw a monkey wrench into the entire day but if you're up early enough you can adjust plan ahead and do all that fun stuff but make sure you get some sleep i know we talked about it earlier you're gonna stock up on some granola bars and some water it's gonna make that day a little bit easier for you so just get some rest it's a long day you don't know when you're gonna fall asleep next so i just would say get enough sleep the night before Tip number two, ladies and gentlemen, the day of the move, and I know most of you are going to be driving your own car, which is great. I would highly recommend getting small, valuable items, important documents, um, anything that's really fragile. Consider transporting them. Um, I know sometimes, I, like me, you got a grill, you got a gas grill. Uh, moving companies aren't going to move that gas tank, you know, and they're not going to necessarily just transport firearms at the same time. So. Plan those items to be moved by you. Like you're gonna personally take them, put them in your trunk, do whatever you gotta do. Um, but just a tip, think about that. Small valuable items, I would make sure that they were close to us. Day of the move, tip number three, ladies and gentlemen, have trash bags readily available. If you plan to pack your trash can in the truck, that's one thing, but make sure you have trash bags ready to go. Uh, like I said, you'll be shocked at what will pop up that turns out to be trash and you need to get rid of. Especially if you ate the night before and you haven't cleaned up the kitchen just yet. That goes back into tip number one where you can get up and you can kind of do some minor cleaning before. But have your throwaway trash bag just ready to go so you can throw it in the trash can and then walk out the door. Just something to consider. Tip number four, ladies and gentlemen, this is something that a lot of people don't necessarily think about doing. I do it every single time I go on vacation and I leave a hotel room or like we're, we're walking out. It's called the final walkthrough. Make sure you do a, a thorough walkthrough. Uh, look in closets, look in the attic, look in the basement, look in um, closed closets, under the sink. Look for anything that you may have accidentally forgot. 
And that's where those extra trash bags come in handy because that's your, holy cow, here's the last bit of items. Here we go. Um, phone chargers are things that get plugged in the wall. Just, you know, it's those last minute items. Just have one bag ready to go. Maybe an extra overnight carry-on bag that's just empty for those kind of items. But definitely do a final walkthrough. You want to make sure that you're leaving the house and you're not walking away from anything important. You'll be shocked at what you might leave and um, it's just a good tip to think about. Okay, tip number five. I do highly recommend though, um, not all movers are created equal. 99% of them are all fantastic people. Uh, you do, Every now and then you might get a bad apple. I'm just saying tip number five is basically keep an eye on your movers. Make sure they're handling your items with care. And, you know, especially the fragile stuff, like I said, make sure you write all over that box if it's fragile. You want to make sure those movers are taking care of your important items. And that way, again, it just makes everything go smoothly. Just, you know, you don't have to micromanage them. You know, they, they do this for a living. They move every single day. So they kind of may have a system in place where they stack certain things and put certain things. Uh, just understand that, you know, as you casually browse, casually watch, you know, they know that you're watching them. They're going to take care of your stuff. Tip number six, final tip, ladies and gentlemen, of this whole process on the day of the move. Tip number six, have sheets labeled with what corresponds with the boxes. So if you have an office, kitchen, basement, garage, um, they'll know what the garage is. But you know what I'm saying? Whatever you listed on your box, go label that room. So if it's master bedroom on the box, Put the master and bedroom sticker paper on the master and bedroom door. Uh, because when the movers arrive, they will, I think most of them will, actually take the boxes wherever they need to go. And that will make you, your process of unpacking go much faster. So if you've got a kid's bedroom, kid's bedroom two, whatever, label it. They'll they'll put it in there. If you got kitchen items, they will put all the kitchen items in the kitchen. Um, if you want it to go to the garage, write garage on it and they'll put it in the garage. It will just make your unpacking process start faster. You'll actually get to move in quicker. And if you just throw everything into the garage, uh, they will do it. It's not a big deal for these movers, especially if you're tipping them. It's definitely not a big deal for them at that point. But tip number six, final tip, make sure you uh, label the rooms, label the boxes, and the movers will do the rest for you. Well, that's the video, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you watching. Make sure if you haven't done it already, like, subscribe the video. And as always, if you're in the area, know someone that's in the moving process or thinking about selling their home, give us a call. S send, them their, send them our way because we love to help people out. That's why we get into this business is to help everybody, especially with every phase of their life. You know, I, I've helped couples, newlyweds, newlyweds get married, get their first home. Uh, I've helped, uh, you know, newlyweds, well, not necessarily newlyweds, but with new child, newborn child, they need a little bit bigger space. Uh, I've helped people fresh out of college get their first home. It's a truly cool experience and it is fulfilling. So please, if you need help, know someone who needs help, send them our way. Can't wait to get started for you. But hey, everybody have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching as always.